Thank you so much, Loza, uh, colleagues and friends. It's really an honor to be here and you know take this opportunity to share uh, social media youth toolkit with every one of you. I'm going to share my screen uh, and please let me know if you have if you can see it. Um, can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Yes, um, yes, we can. Okay, wonderful. So basically, um, we as um, we have developed a social media toolkit for um, the PPD and to support um, young people across uh, developing countries to um, to develop um, strategic advocacy um, messages uh, to the target audience. So wait a sec. It's essentially, sorry, it is essentially a half day training, but um, we're going, I'm going to try to um, condense it to, to a, a 15 or 20 minutes sharing. But if I didn't manage to cover everything, I am going to share the slides and the content with Tahrima Tah Tah and hopefully, and she can share with every one of you. So in today's session, we're gonna cover a little bit about the background and the key concept. And we're going to talk a little bit about the utilized social media platforms and what are these. We're going to talk about how to develop and deliver the social media communication strategy. And we're also going to cover new normal for social media advocacy and COVID-19. And lastly, I'm going to raise, a, uh, raise your attention on particular issues towards privacy and online safety. So um, just a little bit, uh, a, a bit about the key concepts to set up this, to set the stage. I think every one of us know the ICPD um, in, in Cairo 1994, it's the groundbreaking global consensus leading the population development agendas in across the world. And the subsequent program act, of action is, you know, has been leading the way for a lot of the youth movement, sexual and reproductive health movement as well. And it has put people at the center of development, in particular on population development. In 2019, um, the Nairobi summit happened. Uh, it was convened by the government of Kenya and government of Denmark. It, review, it renewed the commitment on the unfinished business. And, and also it has um, uh, uh, raised the three zeros uh, concept, zero preventable maternal deaths, zero unmet needs for family planning, and zero gender-based violence. And it's going to be contributing to the SDGs, which has 17 sustainable development goals. Um, it was adopted in 2015, and um, the deadline is 2030. So um, um, a PPD is the leading agency, um, you know, on population development issues for across developing countries. Um, it has it is comp comprised of 27 developing country member member countries and you know it uses South South cooperation platform to um, conduct capacity building a program and projects dialogues and experience sharing etc. Um, I think every one of us is aware that we're living in a world where COVID-19 has changed our life. Um, it has um, exacerbated sexual reproductive health in many ways. Before the pandemic, the shadow, the shadow pandemic report show, show that one in five women is subject to gender-based violence. And I think, um, and a lot of researchers show that um, the situation is getting worse because of COVID due to the limitation of travel, the you know, isolation um, together with abusers and the mental health issues, everything coming together it is also it is uh, making the gender-based violence issue even worse in this pandemic area, and also it has limited sexual reproductive health services provided in medical institutions. It has disrupted educations and also making, in particular, girls forcing in particular girls out from schools, and that's you know putting girls and young women you know in a more dangerous uh, place, uh, subject to sexual and reproductive health. Uh, negative impact. And uh, South South Corporation, um, I think every one of us um, is convinced is one of the best way to deliver sexual reproductive health for all. And young people is playing a critical role uh, in the South South Corporation space. Globally, 1.8 billion young people aged 10 to 24 live in this world. This is largest young population the world has ever seen. 
and also 90% of this young population live in developing countries. So it's only young people from the developing countries that is going to drive the change um, and is going to contribute to SRHR for all and also going to contribute to ICPD and is going to contribute to the sustainable development goals. So I think everyone, uh, every young people uh, in developing countries having this potential to change the world. And um, um, it, it, the young people can change the world in many means. And um, you know, they can um, mobilize youth participation, they can conduct social media engagements, you know, they can um, uh, uh, deliver programs and results and um, to, 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 to change the issues that um, you know, concerns them the most. And today uh, we are going to specifically talk about social media. Um, uh, the social media currently is the new ways young people talk to each other. Um, 4.6 billion internet users in 2021 globally with 2.4 billion active on social media. And a lot of uh, the, the majority of the social media users are young people aged under 30 and people are spending more than two hours every day on social media. So social media changes people's way of thinking uh, social media delivers message and social media can can be and should be utilized by young activists and youth leaders in our space to make the change. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how. Um, so with the support from a few young people, we have developed this toolkit. Um, this toolkit will introduce a few tools that will support you to deliver strategically develop, deliver your advocacy message to your target audience. Um, it, the toolkit targets young people and youth led organizations engaging in South South cooperation to advocate for COVID-19 recovery in relation to young people's SRH. And we're also, um, it's, uh, we're also hoping that uh, stakeholders around uh, youth leaders and young activists can refer to this tool, toolkit for information and knowledge that includes youth workers, trainers, human rights educators, activists, the youth researchers, government officials, um, et cetera. Um, the, uh, the objective of the toolkit is going to provide a step-by-step -step guide to help you, your group, and young advocates and partner uh, and partner organizations to make use of social media platforms to plan, implement, monitor your own advocacy contributing to COVID-19 recovery within the framework of ICPD and SDG. So with that, um, so let's start with what are the social media pl platforms available so people use social media to share text messages to share images to share videos to have audio conversation to share stories to have conduct live broadcasting to form groups and to do fundraisers and every one of us know facebook is the largest social media platform um, it is uh, ranked third in the world most visited website as at december 2020 and YouTube is one of the largest streaming platform that you can share videos. And Instagram is the place people um, share uh, photos, you know, um, share their lifestyles. It's visual oriented uh, social media platform that features a relatively young users. Around 500 million daily users is active on Instagram and Twitter. I think everyone knows, but also. Um, from our research, we find that predominantly the users on, on Twitter are male, are male um, 60, 68% of them. And LinkedIn is one of the uh, social media for, uh, platform for professionals who share their professional stories, their uh, thinkings in Korea, and, and they have 756 million professional, professional users global, globally. Uh, WeChat, I think many people is familiar. Um, it started off as a messaging app and grew into an integrated hub with multiple functions, including social media, payment, sub, sub applications, mini programs, et cetera. It has over 1.2 billion monthly active users in, the, in 2021. Um, majority of the uh, WeChat users are in China, but we still have a significant portion of users in other countries, in particular in developing countries. And TikTok um, in China is also called Douyin. It's one of the uprising um, kind of uh, a platform people share 
uh, videos, share their lifestyles. Um, and in particular, it's popular among young people. 63% users are under the age of 30. Clubhouse is uprising from 2020. People share their in-depth analysis on certain issues. They form groups. They share their understanding through video messaging, through texting. Um, and um, uh, uh, it is still uprising. Uh, so um, just want to keep under radar. If you haven't yet had a social media, this table will give you a brief overlook of which platform is the best choice for you to share your focused message. And you can see from this, th 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 this table which platform you, you, can, you are going to use. So social media is powerful too, to inform, educate, connect, and mobilize, create a community among your audience. It can enable and facilitate collaboration with youth groups, organizations and stakeholders with the social media platform identified the next thing is for young people is to identify your area of advocacy um, we can talk about identify existing problem and dive into a focal problem and then determining your advocacy growth your advocacy goals um, sorry so for example we're looking at covid 19 effect on young people's shr it may not uh, be the issue that you only look at. There are a lot. There are a lot of you know independent issues that is contributing to this um, to this issue you are looking at. For example, COVID 19s effect on young people's sexual re reproductive health and rights is manifested by the fact that it increased domestic violence. It increased difficulty in accessing sexual reproductive health services. It have uh, suspended schools and hindering comprehensive sexuality education. So just want to give you a look, uh, give, give you a sense that um, if you're looking at the big uh, issue, there are different lenses to break it down to different independent and you know, existing problems. So the, the deeper you go, the more focused you can be. And this is a very constructive tool to help you understand what contributes to this social issue and how this social issue is going to impact in a broader society. It's called tree analysis. Um, the cause is the, are, are the roots, um, the issues are the tree trunk, and the leaves are the consequences. So for example, we're looking at a lack of access to SRHR services for young people during COVID-19, and it may be caused, caused by the restriction on movement during lockdown. The public health resources prioritized to urgent essential medical needs, a lack of flexibility to receive SRH services remotely. And it, these causes is further caused by the importance and urgency of SRH. People don't know the importance and urgency of SRH services for young people. And we're looking at the leaves of the tree. You can say, you can see that the lack of access to SRH services may cause different impacts such as delayed treatment, you know, the limited growth access to make decision over their own bodies, unintended pregnancy, et cetera, et cetera. So this too is useful in a way that it helps you to understand, you know, the cause and the impact of the social issue you are going to focus. Once you have had a focused issue, you need to have your goal, how you wanna make a change and that you need to make it smart. S stands for specific, M stands for measurable, A stands for achievable, R stands for relevance, and T stands for time bound. So we now, so far we have had your social uh, social issue you are going to look at, and then you are going to develop an advocacy strategy. Um, this um, strategy is called the public narrative framework is developed by Marshall Gantz. It's going to it's, it's very helpful for crafting compelling message to motivate actions. The framework is comprised of three core elements to tell your story, um, story of yourself, story of us, and story of now. Story of self is what motivates you to care about this issue. What was the situation that you have encountered and how did, you imp how did that impact you? What choices did you make? and what were the consequences. Story of us is 
on what are some shared values and experience of yourself and your audience, how might your story of yourself resonate with others. Th story of now is what are the collective challenges or social issues we're facing as a community? What should be shared vision and changes you would like to see in the future? And what actions should we take to effect that change? And um, the next step is that with, with the message, you need to know who are you going to deliver this message to? And for that, I'm going to introduce the stakeholders map. So in this matrix, it helps you to categorize the stakeholders broadly around you into four, uh, four groups. The highest uh, important group is those who have high interest in your social issue and have high power. For that, for these stakeholders, you have to manage very closely. And the lowest um, important group are those who have low interest and low power in your social issue. For this groups, for this group of people, you need to mo monitor them constantly with minimum efforts. And the, and we also have group that you need to uh, keep them satisfied. We also have group you have you need to keep them informed. So basically, this uh, this uh, uh, tool will help you, you know, really break down to understand what are the subpopulation that matters to your advocacy. And then broadly, with everything you know down or, uh, down to the ground, we have prepared. We need to you know have a long term plan of how we are going to run this. And I'm going to you know briefly introduce you the GAN chart. It's basically a lot of program managers know this. It shows you how you are going to plan your advocacy. You need to have a preparation stage. You have you need to have an implementation stage. You need to have a monitoring ev evaluation stage. And for that, you can track on a weekly basis or on a biweekly basis to see the progress you've made and we've delayed and how you can accelerate the progress. And also don't forget that you need to have a budget to deliver an advocacy plan. Um, it can involve um, human resource cost, the social media subscription cost, you know, the cost to make small videos, things like that, just to uh, just so that you are aware as young as youth leaders, as youth organizations, you need to have a budget to go together with an uh, implementation plan. Um, so towards the later stage, uh, um, essentially, if you're looking at the social media advocacy strategy, we are going to convince people from strangers to those who support us. And in the business world, there is um, a strategy called the marketing funnel. It's basically um, starting with changing people's awareness, and then people start to consider um, supporting, and then people start to take actions to really support your advocacy. And then finally, they become your loyal supporter to really advocate together with you. And I think this is the state, these are the stages you need to uh, be aware of in terms of really change the target audience so that they stand along together with you. Monitoring evaluation. I think we can keep it quite light. Three things you need to keep in mind. What um, are the things you have not considered before and you should start doing for the next, uh, in the next time? What are the things um, and activities that exist, it, it, that it is existing and you need to stop? You, you won't do it again next time. And what are the things you did well and you need to continue? Um, quickly on um, advocacy in COVID-19 pandemic era, um, as you know, people are increasingly having vir virtual meetings, are going to have video contents on trends. So this should be under your consideration. You know, we're no longer having a physical gathering. So taking advantage of virtual meetings, virtual events like this time, uh, and also take advantage of take advantage of the video streaming. Those are, you know, the, 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 the trends we're having right now. Uh, a few housekeeping issues, but also I think very important is the privacy and online safety. A lot of times, a, a lot of times people forget about it. They, they, they thought privacy will take care of itself, but actually no, we have seen a lot of 
sad stories that you know people just neglect their privacy issues. A few tips. Be mindful on your digital footprint. It will be tracked and it can be tracked. Protect your passwords. Read official guidelines. I think a lot of a lot of us don't do it, but I advise it to do it, in particular if you are going to open a new social media account. And uh, protect your audience um, privacy, in particular if you are an educational uh, um, a, a, a person, you want to uh, offer some adv educational advice make sure that you have communicated them accordingly and you have obtained the consent, consent from your audience and you need to also observe the legal requirements in the um in the country you, you operate so um one last thing is that uh, uh, in a lot of a, a lot on a lot of social media there are still harassment there are abuse happening um several ways you can uh, manage it you can report that to the social media platform or and also you can report that to the local police station just so that you're aware also to protect yourself online on social media and i think that's uh, very important take advantage of the guidelines you see uh, offered by the social media so i hope i have managed my time very well uh, thank you very much